How can anybody say an Igbo man cannot be president of Nigeria and I will accept it? Then it shows how brainless I am. If I'm the president of Nigeria today, I would have turned Southeast Nigeria into the hub, our own Silicon Valley. These are people endowed. They are as brilliant as the Chinese, the Koreans, and the Indians put together. We have them. Why are we not using them? But because there was a civil war before, and we said we have uh, forgiven ourselves, and now, and so, but you are forgiving yourselves, but an Igbo man cannot become anything in Nigeria, cannot be president, cannot be trusted to be inspector general of police, cannot be trusted. Why? Look at Joe Biden. He has already appointed Nigerians into his government. Already. Before he even, before his inauguration, he already appointed Nigerians. He didn't say, because they say Nigerians, so they are very corrupt people, all those stupid, you know, sentiments that people express against us. He appointed them. Why? He saw their talent. He appointed the first black man. Now, Pentagon, as a new Secretary of Defense, is a black man. In Nigeria, you say an Igbo man cannot be Inspector General of Police, an Igbo man cannot be Chief of Army Staff, an Igbo man. Why? So if you don't want them, if you don't trust them, and they say they want to go, then so why are you then stopping them? Why are you stopping them? Ah, you don't want me, and you are saying, even slaves got freedom. These are people contributing to world economy not just and um, listen not nigerian economy the igbos are contributing to world economy there is no country i have been i will not find an igbo man either at the peak of academia at the peak of business at the peak of professions they are everywhere medical doctors surgeons lawyers Bankers, they are everywhere. And then we come back to Nigeria, you are discriminating against them. And you are saying they will not agitate for their own nation. We are the ones causing the problem. If you want that Igbo man, then bring them nearer and see if they will not perform. In this Lagos today, where we live, Anything we want to do now, innovation. The first thing is, let's say, let's go to Computer Village. Who are the people controlling Computer Village? Let's go to Alaba. Who are the people controlling Alaba? Do you think people with empty brains can control those things that they both control? Even with all this fight, Biafra, if you go to Kano today, without the Igbo setting spare parts, nobody will function. All the cars there will come to stand still. You go to Sokoto, you will meet them there. Go to Borno, go to Iraq, go to Afghanistan. You see Igbo man doing great. An ineffective and incompetent government be we are all victims. And don't let anybody deceive you. Those of you who are in business, your business will have been better today if we have a competent and uh, 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 effective and performing government. It will happen. As I said, giving excuse, uh, we, we met many challenges. Now, if there are no challenges, then you wouldn't need to come. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. If there are no challenges, you don't need to come. And you are you come in because you know that there are challenges. And then giving us excuse that you have many challenges, that's why you haven't achieved result. And then you still want to go. The first lesson I learned in my military uh, training. It's never reinforced failure. What we have now is failure. Never you reinforce failure. Never you reinforce failure. Let failure be failure. I'm gone. 
And if you do not see what you should see, you will then be a victim of what you don't like. Because it's only when you see what you should see and you do what you should do that you put away what you do not like. If you don't see what you should see and you don't do what you should do, you will be a victim of what you don't like. My name is Sarah Tishaya Audu and uh, Mr. Peter Obi said to us, go verify. So there is this video where he tells us that he has two pairs of shoes and um, he says you don't need any more two pairs of black shoes. He said he bought them from Marks and Sparks and they were 59 pounds. So um, basically the shoes had, um, so the person doing the video uh, took a photo of the shoes and in the middle of the shoe at the sort of back, the sole, there was a red strip. So I wanted to check whether Marks and Sparks did these shoes or whether that was a Prada, although the Prada red logo is longer, but nonetheless I wanted to check and I'm extremely happy to say that I have found the shoes. Um, you can go verify <laughs> and yeah it's that he's absolutely right um, these shoes are between 35 and um, and 59 pounds and yeah I have verified because Peter Obi really those shoes were not Prada they are from Marks and Sparks I'm here in Marks and Sparks Kensington London I've just checked it I verified you can verify Mr. O.B. on everything he says. He's honest. Anambra is not an oil-producing state and does not have oil in commercial quantity, yet it does not take loans or owe worker salary. According to the United Nations, Anambra has one of the lowest poverty rates in Nigeria at 11.2%, which places her ahead of 33 states. Anambra and other southeastern states lagged in education and had poor boy child school enrollment. But today, Anambra leads the nation in WASC results. For the past three years, Anambra has had over 60% pass rates in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination. They have made the best improvements in education in the whole nation, and the state government even supports private schools financially. But look at these states that thrive by depending solely on federal allocation. They are broke, cannot pay salaries, and are so debt-ridden, banks will not lend them any more money. Worst of all is that these states are performing woefully in education. There is something to be learned from Anambra. Is it their policy? Is it their budgeting practice? Is it their sense of community? Whatever it is, it is working. The federal government and other states should study what Anambra State has been doing right and replicate it nationally. Anambra proves that Nigeria does not need oil to thrive. What Nigeria needs to thrive is education. What is under the ground of this nation is nothing compared to what is between the ears of our people. My name is Ben Murray Bruce, and I just want to make common sense.